the Scratch Orchestra came about in response to the demand of a, a lot of young people who weren't trained musicians to get together to make what we call experimental music on a large scale. It has nothing in common with a conventional orchestra. Nonetheless, it is people who are capable of playing music in the ordinary way. Well, not at all. These people may be visual artists, they may be people interested in theatre, they may be perfectly ordinary office workers or students or what have you. They're not necessarily trained in playing any instrument at all. Some of them would uh, perform activities of one kind and another, not necessarily producing sound, because scratch music was really a composite of people making their own activities. So that some of these activities would involve playing conventional instruments like saxophones or flutes and this, that and the other. And other things would simply involve making motions with a hand or arranging a scarf or all kinds of activities which would not necessarily make sound. The only limitation was that it should be fairly low key so as to allow somebody who wanted to express a solo to be able to do it on top of several people playing scratch music. So allowing for the fact that we can't see what's going on, can we hear what goes on? Well, yes, let's, let's listen to a bit of this tape. Yes, we don't, we don't need, actually need to it as, as though it was a, a fully composed piece of music because the essence of scratch music is that people are asked to write accompaniments. So each person writes accompaniments and plays these accompaniments and everybody else plays their accompaniments together. So in fact, this whole body of sound that makes up a lot of people playing scratch music could be used as a background for somebody playing a solo. And in fact, we can go on talking. What on earth was that? Well... Accidents will happen. That must, that must have been um, somebody who was playing scratch music on a balloon suddenly decided to play scratch music so hard that the balloon burst, and I think that's, that's what we must have just heard. So. But that would count as a solo performance, presumably? Well, yes. I mean, it was a solo performance that came about unintentionally. Apart from that kind of thing, do the accompaniments come together and gel as jazz-wise, as it were, or, or what happens? Well, that was the theory, that in fact, if you do get a lot of people engaging in activity in the same space, that these activities will accommodate themselves to each other. This represents some kind of social ideal. You do include in the activities, the any activities that can be part of scratch music, politics. Well, that's not quite true, because in fact, we took a very unpolitical line at that time. But in fact, what came out in the course of the scratch orchestra development was that sooner or later we did come up against conflict with uh, the establishment and we had a concert band and um, as a result of that various members of the scratch orchestra who are politically much more conscious than I was started to ask various fundamental questions like who is the scratch music playing for who is the scratch orchestra playing for what kind of people so what answer are you now giving to the question who is scratch music for well the music should say something it should say something definite like it should say, don't go off into a corner and make your own little sounds. I hope to satisfy yourself that way. But actually uh, resist the pressures of the society that are around us, which we find bad. Let's say resist the pressures of capitalism and in fact take steps to arouse the people to overthrow capitalism. So it's a kind of revolutionary politics which has now come into the scratch orchestra. And it has a, in, in that sense, it should develop a hopeful message that it is in fact possible to overthrow the system in which the old type scratch orchestra was forced to exist as a kind of island of idyllic pleasure you know a last question that i think a number of listeners would want me to ask you're not having us on no no i'm not having you on this is something that really happened <laughs> and, uh,